Good morning, everyone. Um, I, I don't see Brother Desire in. I, I thought he was being, but uh, we'll we, we continue anyway. And if, if it comes in, if it comes in, it can take over. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning thankful for being with us throughout the night. Wake us up this morning. We know many people didn't reach this point. And we pray, Lord, that you be with us as we study the Word of God found in Desire of Ages. We thank you for all these discussions where we can learn from each other. And we thank you for all the blessings. We pray for the aid of our Holy Spirit to help us understand more. In the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Shall we begin with him? Uh, five, six, seven, have thine own way, Lord. It has four verses. We'll take the first, any one for the second. I'll take the second one. Thank you. Any one for the third? Five, six, seven. I'll do the third. Thank you. And any one for the fourth verse? We'll take it. Thank you. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Thou art the potter. I am the clay. Mold me and make Search me and try me, Master, today. Whiter than snow, Lord, wash me just now. As in thy presence, humbly I bow. If thine own way, Lord, if thine own way, wounded and whispering, help me, I pray. Power, O oh power, surely is thine. Touch me and heal me, save me and divide Have thy own way, Lord, have thy own way. Hold all my being. Absolute sway, feel with thy spirit, till all shall see, Christ only always living in me. Amen. Amen. Thank you for the lovely Amen. singing. We're just going to share the screen. Well, we didn't. Uh, we just. We just. Um, yesterday, we just did. Um, the two paragraphs that was done the day before and there was so much to talk about that um, <laughs> we didn't get any further. A new wine and old bottles and um, uh, sewing uh, good material on clothes that are, are not, uh, you know, <laughs> the materials that are not, not good. And we had a lot, a lot of illustrations and um, talking about traditions of men, 
how things have, have gone into the church that um uh, you know, we wondered where where they, they were and where, whether they were biblical or not. And so we had a good discussion yesterday. Anybody got any thoughts uh, before we speak, continue? It's paragraph, um, the big paragraph, wasn't it? The last one we did was 278.4. So if anybody's got any, any, any thoughts on, uh, any thoughts on uh, what we discussed yesterday, before we continue? don't see any hands so we'll read the next two paragraphs. So. The Pharisees thought, thought themselves too wise to need instruction, too righteous to need salvation, too highly honoured to need the honour that comes from Christ. The Saviour turned away from them to find others who would receive the message of heaven. In the untutored fishermen, in the publican, at the marketplace, in the women of Samaria, woman of Samaria, in the common people who heard him gladly, he found his new bottles for the new wine. The instrumentalities to be used in the gospel work are those souls who gladly receive the light which God sends them. These are his agents for imparting the knowledge of truth to the world. If through the grace of Christ his people will become new bottles, he will fill them with new wine. The teachings of Christ though it was represented by the new wine, was not a new doctrine, but a revelation of that which had been taught from the beginning. But to the Pharisees, the truth of God had lost its original significance and beauty. To them, Christ's teachings was new in almost every respect, and it was unrecognised and unacknowledged. That's sad, isn't it? Yeah. Because the, the their traditions, they didn't want to know anything else apart from their traditions. So any anything, any ex extension of the gospel, like Christ did, because he, he went right into it. You know, they would not accept because they, they, they hadn't learnt it themselves, because they didn't study. They, all they wanted to do was to push their traditions. That's true. It was the, it was like it was like a it was like fresh wine, you know, his, his teachings to them. Well, they, but they didn't accept it, you know. It was refreshing because they were they were stale in the in the form of worship. You know, it was just tradition and um, do the same rituals. You know, and and uh, and they had an, an exclusive party. Yeah, an exclusive party. They thought they was. Um, better than anyone else but they was to, to, was to teach people the way but they didn't do it you know they just it was just exclusive and then it says the saviour turned away from them to find others who would receive the message of heaven in the untutored fishermen in the publicans at the marketplace the women of samaria the common people who heard him gladly he found his new bottles for the new wine but they they didn't they they thought that all those people were dogs. Yeah, they you know, looked down. They thought on there them. was scum looked down on them. You know. Mm. But Christ is no respecter of persons. If it hadn't been for these so-called people, the, the the gospel wouldn't have gone forward because they weren't going to present it. No. Yeah. Any thoughts, anyone? Pharisees thought themselves too wise to need instruction. We've got a hand up. Yes. Sister Dorothy, thank you. Yeah, good morning. Thank good you, Helen and Linda. Good morning, everyone. Yeah, um, just before we I we can comment on this, I just wanted to mention that for me, my understanding of these studies on this book is so that we can pick on things that we do or we think that they are right but when during a uh, holy spirit led studies uh, we um something comes up as a tradition that we we practice which has got no spiritual uh, uh, bible support in it 
Um, I think it's important for us to consider unlearning because I think for me, it's the whole purpose is for the word of God to speak and the spirit of prophecy to speak. And if I'm holding some practices that are just mere traditions um, and I am willing to continue them. So how many traditions and practices uh, are we going to entertain and continue to do? You see, even if they are not strictly forbidden in the Bible, um, we uh, should allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us. I, let me just give an example of something that the Bible, like for example, when they say that um, an elder, I think it's an elder should, or a deacon should not drink much wine. See something like that? It doesn't say, it, it does not appear to strictly forbid drinking alcohol. But we, as Adventists, we don't believe that we should be putting alcohol in our bodies. Those kind of uh, scriptures that sound as though we it's okay to drink little wine and here and there. But we know what wine does to us when it gets into our heads. So we we just become accustomed and God gives us that light to show that there is nothing good that comes out of drinking alcohol. The same is for practices that we were discussing yesterday as uh, circles. When, when I did a, a brief study about it, these are practices that are practiced by so many religions, pagan religions, um, uh, so many of them. So it's for us to decide how far are we willing to bring in creeping compromises of trying to act like other churches do? Because this is common. And also, I just wanted to mention from my own, uh, from, I believe the gospel is pure. And I believe we don't need to do anything outwardly to appease God or to make him see how how united we are by forming circles and all of that. I believe God answers our prayers not based on our outward expressions and feelings, trying to feel and show affection. There's nothing wrong in that in itself. But for me, during time of prayer, I, 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 I don't feel comfortable with it and it's okay for me to express my thoughts they are not meant to offend they are just meant to uh, it's what I picked on the on the lesson so we shouldn't uh, feel offended and we shouldn't be encouraging each other to continue practicing something that it's just not biblical. It's just that I thought I would mention that because yesterday I think we left some people did feel that there was any point in taking that, you know, far. And I think some people may have <laughs> may have taken it personal and felt there's nothing wrong with that. And at the end of the day, we are not forced by anyone during this study to accept opinions or our findings about certain traditions and practices. So I just wanted uh, to, to clear the air that we are all here to study, but at the end of the day, what you take away and what I take away is my personal choice. Thank you. Thank you for those thoughts. Uh, talking about the wine, it says, um, uh, you know, don't drink much wine, but it's not, is it referring to alcohol? It doesn't say what it's referring to really. But we know that uh, if you if you study further, you'll see that strong drink is a mocker. You know, wine, uh, alcohol shouldn't be taken into your body. Uh, it's a devil's brew. So um, you know, it could be talking about grape juice. You know, because that's a fresh, that's that's new wine. Um, you know, it's not not fermented. So 
um, you know, um, you have to study further when you see a text that you're not sure about, study further into it and, uh, you know, you'll, you'll get the answers. Yeah. And, and also, a good book to read on creeping compromise is um, the one written by Joe Cruz. Mm. That goes into a lot of things that people don't even think is creeping compromise. Like, you, you, know, you know, you've got the, the dress, um, dress reform, but when people go to the beach, even Adventists, they'll go, they'll go strip off, put the, the bikini on or whatever, and, and that's not right. You know, it's, 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 it's an abomination. Anybody else got any thoughts? Sister Judith, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Yeah, just going on the, the reading, what you just read. Um, at the first paragraph, we just read the first. Two wise to need instruction too righteous to need salvation and too highly honored to need the honor that comes from, from Christ and the Savior turned away from them to find others with the message of heaven. So sad really that, you know, they would not accept um, the message from Christ as Pharisees. And it makes me think of this verse in First Corinthians 1, verse 18, which says, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. So sometimes we wonder, we, I mean, it's even happening, sometimes even in our families, to the family, to family members, the truth, and they just do not want to accept it. And again, I suppose we have to recognize that it's the Holy Spirit who convicts us. And if we are constantly rejecting the light which is being presented to us, then that verse becomes really true, that the gospel becomes, you know, the preaching of the cross, to them that perish, that are perishing, it's foolishness. But to those who are saved, it's the power of God. So um, we have to be careful. The light which we are receiving um, to accept it, especially, um, yeah, to accept that light when it comes to us and to turn away from those things which we'll be doing. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Yes, thank you for those thoughts. We have to accept the light. Um, looking at the um, uh, fishermen, the publicans, the women of Samaria, these people lived um, humble lives. You know, they, they, wasn't, they hadn't got all the, the pride and the the arrogance that the priests had and so they were open to the gospel um you know it's it's how you know and they could see it's a, it was a better way of life than what they were living but when you've got arrogance and pride and you think you know everything then it's it's very hard to accept the gospel yes the priests and rabbis they thought they were the gospel mm. they thought that you know that they was living a good lives but it does say in the end that many, many accepted Jesus. Yeah, it's true, yeah. It's true, many accepted Jesus. So they must have seen chinks in the system that wasn't right, you know, and they, they saw that Christ offered them something better than what they had. But the worst enemies were in the church. Mm. Sister Dorothy, thank you. Amen. Yeah, um, I just wanted to... Um, uh, to point on the first sentence of the second paragraph. The teaching of Christ, though it was represented by the new wine, was not a new doctrine, but the revelation of that which had been taught from the beginning. 
Uh, this reminded me of the New and the Old Testament, how greatly it's misunderstood by most Christians out there. Like the Old Testament is outdated and we don't need to concentrate on that. We need to concentrate now on the New Testament and how sad it is that if only, if only the light can come to them to understand that without the Old Testament, the New Testament, you know, is like gospel standing on one leg. And uh, I believe this is uh, what the enemy didn't want uh, people to receive the, uh, the gospel that Jesus Christ came preaching. And you will meet some people, they will be holding the New Testament. Um, before, in my ignorance, before I knew, before I joined the Adventist church, I used to carry a little New Testament Bible. I wouldn't do that today because when I have my Bible, if I don't have the Old Testament, I don't, I cannot be reading line upon line. So um, the gospel is from Genesis to Revelation, the whole gospel. But the Pharisees here, they completely uh, rejected the light that was actually shed on the Old Testament. Bible prophecies and everything that was spoken by the prophets, Jesus came and fulfilled these prophecies and they uh, shut their conscience and their ears to the light that Christ brought. Thank you. Yes, thank you for those thoughts. We need both the, the Old Testament and the New Testament. They're the two witnesses. And we know that uh, in the French Revolution, there was in sackcloth, there was, mm. uh, you know, they just dis, dis, uh, discarded, discarded the Bible, discarded anything that was decent. And, and in the end, that to go back. It was a right of terror. Yeah, it was, uh, right, it, was a, yeah it, was, it was it was debauchery and all kinds of nasty, down nasty the things. You know, and... Um, yeah, you, you can't have one without the other. Oh, I, can, I remember our mum, she was at bus stop years ago and she, she heard two people talking and they were saying, Revelation and Daniel, closed books, we're not to study them. Sure. And, uh, you know, I where did they get that idea from? The priests. And, you know, it must be the church leaders that's told them, you don't mm. look at those books, they're the closed books. And if the church is teaching that, then they're, they're not going to get the truth. Any more thoughts we can glean out of these two these passages? Uh, Sister Hope, thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry, I was fidgeting to mute. Um, indeed, um, it is not as it says there, as our sister read, that the teachings of Christ, though it was represented by the new wine, was not a new doctrine, but the revelation of that which had been taught from the beginning. And we know, even today, uh, no wonder when we're talking about Babylon, uh, it, it just took me to Jeremiah, uh, Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 7. That's how we have to be very careful indeed about the teachings and particularly as we are learning even today what is happening. And it says in verse 7, Babylon had been a golden cup in the Lord's hand and made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine Therefore, the nations are mad. They are mad. Uh, because it was still in the old time, the church had indeed the leaders had confederated with the traditions of that which were outside God's teaching. And we know Babylon means confusion. And how much more, we, when we are talking about what we are discussing, how we are so much in confusion, 
if God, if the Holy Spirit of God will help us to see what is happening in the church, you know what is, we, we know much that is happening in the church. How much the, LB, the, the LGBT have been accepted in the church. Uh, the, the worldly worship is in the church. Like somebody said, he went to look for the church outside, he found the, the, the world is in the church. It's the mixed. That is the drunkenness of the wine. The messages that are so much indeed bringing the people into confusion. And particularly because it's the church, it's not the outside, it's the church of God, the Laodicean uh, state we are in, uh, 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 lukewarm, instead of being hot or cold. And that is what Christ is saying to us. He, as he was saying to the Pharisees and the scribes, the teachers of the law, it's the same message today that he's telling us. Let us not be confused. We need to come out of Babylon in th that mixed, mixed, mixed messages, mixed doctrines that are not bringing us into his salvation. So we have to be prayerful and God asking us, uh, as we are asking God to open up our eyes of understanding. Otherwise, that because it's a great controversy and the enemies ways of doing things is so subtle he only needs to change one little tittle and then we are all confused so even today when we look into our church we know we've been much has been 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 talked about climate change all those things and the church is going with that and like we're worshiping nature we're not talking about god who, who, who is the creator, indeed, of all nature. We are worshiping nature. And if we're not careful, our church is also being taken by these doctrines. And, and uh, as indeed we're continuing to see where the church is going, it doesn't mean that it, it doesn't mean we shouldn't pray for them. We need to pray for our church and to pray for ourselves and to examine the times we're in, like the children of Issachar. But also to be mindful in the times that we are living in, that, uh, uh, that, that, that the Holy Spirit may help us to talk of this thing so that we are not overtaken because many people, because of ignorance, we are ignorant so, so many times when we are, or oh, climate change, yes, you need to look after the earth. It's our responsibility. But they're taking us away from looking to Christ and our salvation of our souls. And that is what God is protecting us. It's the message that needs to protect his people and taught in us and to teach others of this message. Amen. Amen. Thank you for those thoughts. Um, yes, we need to pray for the church. Um, I mean, there's a lot of things happening that shouldn't be. Thank you for those thoughts. Sister Ali. Good morning. Thank you. Morning. Um, I, I do like what Sister Hope had said. Um, you know, I look at the, I look at the, um, there are people who want to hear the message and there are people who don't want to hear yeah because it says the savior turned away from them from the savior turned away from them to find others who would receive the message from heaven and i find that when speaking to people and you know some people turn their nose up and they don't want to know and um you know you're talking and you're talking truth and they want to argue with you um you know God says, um, that's off your shoes and go to the next town. So I would um, find people who, who want to hear the message. You know, tradition, people do love tradition because that's all they know. They don't want to hear something new. They don't want to, because they're so used to what they are, they, they've been doing or they've been told or, and, you know, the new, 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 the new wine, new doctrine is, is, is foolishness to them. 
because it's 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 not what they're used to, you know, until they hear it and more more and more. So um you know, God went out to find people who want to hear the message and because he stands at the door and knock, you know, he doesn't barge in. Yeah, it's up to you if you want to hear it. It's not it's not for everyone because he's he said it's not everyone that says Lord Lord. Yeah, but it's those who do the will of my father. So if you don't want to hear it, then hey, that's your prerogative. But if you want to hear the message and the message is the truth, then hey, so be it. You can hear the message because it's there. Tradition will always be there. Tradition will never go away until God comes. But you know, for 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 us as as Adventists, we know the truth. We give the truth, speak the truth, hear the truth, you know, try to speak to, to people who want the truth. But if they don't want to hear, we go to the next town. As 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 God says, he, he would um, find others who want to receive the message. Thank you. Thank you. That's what we're taught. What to just up our feet and go to someone else over there because you can spend so much time on people who just don't want to know. But you just can, you have to pray for them anyway because mm. they might in the end you know, accept. Some people are willfully ignorant. Mm, yeah. Thank you for those thoughts, Sister Sharon. Good morning, everyone. You know, just talking about the the new bottles. You know, to, to formulate a new bottle, um, you have to be able to um, mould it and fashion it. And this is what God wants to do. The word of God and in his hands, we are just the clay. So therefore, he will fashion us to what he wants to use us for his divine purpose. So some of us are fashioned into being teachers. Some of us are being fashioned to being, um, you know, um, pastors. Some of us are fashioned to be deacon and de deaconesses. Some of us are fashioned just to, to just to speak the word. Some of us are to to be the the interactors with people. But we can only be fashioned if we are willing for the potter to shape us. And, and if you think about it, when you um, bake the bottles, it is through adversity that we have to be baked because until that, that um, clay is um, baked, it's not fit for the purpose. So the case is we have to be willing to go through the process in order to be filled with the spirit. And if you think about it, we talked about the, bottle, um, the vessels before. If you attempt to put um, new wine into old vessels, well, if you think about it, those old vessels now, the wear and tear and the pour, the, 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 the ability to uh, hold the liquid, it becomes redundant. God cannot pour his, his spirit into a vessel that's broken, or redundant and so but the case is it is the process that God has to put us through and this whole thing of new doctrine people like everything new but what we need to do is that the know that the old systems that God has established they never change so when you think about it we have been on this earth for humanity 6,000 years coming up to 7,000 years but to God that's only six days so while we are looking at God's time frame and saying that God God changed this this has to change because it's old-fashioned in God's eyes it is not so we have to be humble enough to know that whatever God does is right and whatever he wants to do with us as a vessel, his divine will is always perfecting us. And people want to do the perfecting on the outside. You know, you, you want to do those beauty uplifts 
people putting on new garments. But if we are wretched on the outside, it on the inside, it doesn't matter what we put on. And this is the, the fallacy that the, um, the Pharisees had convinced that even their own hearts, that as long as they were okay on the outside, that the inside would be fine. And as long as they had a knowledge of the doctrine, that would be, that would get them right. But it's not the knowledge, it's the processing and allowing ourselves to, to allow God to take us through these processes and then to use us at the end for his purpose and not saying to God, well, I'm not willing to be a deaconess. I want to be, I want to be the pastor as a woman. Oh, you no. Know, and God is saying, no, I know the process. I know your the, the plans that I have for you. And, and he has that expected end. And so when we understand that God's words is beauty and life, and when we have those things in our lives, it makes the journeys, the journey and the trials so much easier to deal with. Amen. Thank you for those thoughts. Yes, we have to be willing to, to be in the place where God wants us to be. We cannot think, well, uh, you want to get higher and higher and higher and it's not God's will. But we're not to pick and choose. We have to allow the Holy Spirit to, to lead, lead and guide us. Because we, if we can look look back, it's the best way. Yeah. It's the best way. When, uh, we, when we pick and choose and mess things up for ourselves and other people as well. Mm. Thank you for those thoughts. Uh, prayer retreat. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, sisters. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And thank you for taking the cover as well um, this morning and yesterday. Uh, blessings. Uh, pray for one as well. Well, I'm, I suppose I missed out a bit, um, but I'm going to to go to the to the part which was saying the teaching of Christ, though it was represented by the new wine. It was not a new doctrine, but the revelation of that which had been taught from the beginning. <laughs> then it says, but to the Pharisees, the truth of God had lost its original significance and beauty. Now, uh, this is the, um, the, the part which I was thinking over. It says, but to the Pharisees, the truth of God had lost its original significance and beauty. And I was thinking, is it possible in our day to day that um, there's some truths that we see in the Bible that have lost their significance, their original significance and beauty? Um, and I was also thinking, about the text in uh, Luke chapter 18, I believe verse 9, where the, the text says, when the Son of Man shall come, shall he find faith in the earth? Will he find faith in the earth? Now, oh, the faith that is spoken of is the faith of Jesus. It's the faith that is based on that saith the Lord. It is the faith that is based on it is written. Faith is a principle which is linked or anchored on obedience or doing what the word says. Exactly what the word says. So when that text is leaving a question for us to ponder on, when the Son of Man shall come, will he find faith on the earth? This is speaking of the faith in the word of God. Are there going to be people still who will be holding sola scriptura, who will say uh, God's word and his word alone? 
who will say everything that is written, um, who will say will live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. That is the faith of Jesus. So how do we get to a point where, like the Pharisees, the text or the truth loses its significance? That's a question that I was just thinking. But I think the answers are already in everything that we've been talking about. When we start to, uh, to, 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 to mix commandments of men and commandments of God, we, we do dishonor to God's word. And you know, like the Pharisees, who put high regard on the commandments of men. And little by little, this can happen gradually. The word of God loses its truth, uh, its significance. The truth loses its beauty. The more we put a layer of human philosophy or I think, the word of God continues to lose its power and its significance. And this can happen over time. You know, people don't just wake up every morning, uh, in, a morning, in the morning saying, uh, I don't really think this is what the verse is saying. I mean, this happens in the church. We, we won't even go into the world. There are issues right now which we never, uh, an issue um, back in the day. Um, if 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 somebody uh, who lived back in the day would come back today, they would be surprised to know that there are many things that actually can be made agendas on our sessions. And you wonder how have we come to this point where we even have, we agree that, oh, there's an issue here that we need to discuss. When the word of God has clearly stated his position on the issue. So, so I think what we're dealing with is exactly what Jesus was dealing with. And the only solution to the problems we have in the church today and in the world is going back to appreciate the word of God. Now, I say we need to appreciate the word of God. You see, there's nothing else that can be compared to the word of God. God who is eternal, who is infallible, who is just, who is truthful, who is wise, who is all wise, who is all knowing, is the one who is inspired to these words. Some say, well, then times have changed. We're living now in the 21st century. You got to understand the, 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 the um, they say the environment in which the, these scriptures were written. You got to understand the times in which we're, and they'll tell you, I mean, are we suggesting that when God inspired the writing of that scripture, he didn't know what was going to happen in 2023. When we believe that he knows the end from the beginning, are we suggesting that he was not all-knowing at the time when he inspired those, those writings? So once we start to give that occasion to cherry-pick what we think is relevant to us, the word of God now start, starts to lose its significance. We start to lose, the, 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 because the, re, the written word is, is alive, is, is life. It has to be taken as, this is why Jesus' teaching was very powerful. Because people had never seen somebody who was so bound by scripture. Because to them, the Pharisees, they, 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 they constructed what was relevant 
in the scripture. And this is what we, we see happening now. Here, Dr. So-and-so, and they'll tell us, oh, um, I was listening to another uh, clip where um, uh, Dr. Samuel Bakayoki was, um, was presenting. Um, I mean, you, you feel really discouraged and disappointed that the audience is full. The, 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 the hall was full. The audience chamber was full. People had come from many parts. You know, they're coming to listen to this man present. And he says, um, when the revelator says in John 1 verse 10 that um, uh, it was on the Lord's day that um, um, uh, he received the visions. You know, he says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day when he then received the visions. Sister Y comments, she says, this was on the Sabbath. We know this is to be true. This is true because Jesus himself said he was the Lord of the Sabbath. So when he says it was, John says it was on the Lord's day. He was one of the disciples who was there when Jesus was saying the Sabbath is the Lord's day. But somehow back here he says, well, I'm here to suggest that um, it could not have been the Sabbath. It could have been um, a, another day. Because no man, was, now here is his reasoning. And it was far-fetched. He says, because no man knows the day, nor the hour. How is that relevant to the text that is so clear, that is speaking of uh, 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 the aspect of spirituality and what God has enjoined to be his day? So, so you will hear people like this and people pay attention. They listen to them. They say, well, Dr. Samuel has spoken. These people have been studying. And first of all, what he says in his introduction, he says, you know, I'm privileged to present to you uh, this, what has been my study for the past 20 years. He says, I've been studying the book of Revelation for the past 20 years. I said, Lord, have mercy. So this is what we're having to deal with. Um, if the word of God is going to retain its significance and its power, it has to be understood as it is. It needs no man's interpretation. Only when it's symbolic, we then have to find again in scripture the meaning of the symbol. So yeah, um, that was the part that really um, got me there. Thank you. Yes, thank you for those thoughts. Um, the, in, the, in, in, the, in the Bible times, there was no issue what day was the Lord's day. It was Sabbath. They, they weren't keeping any of the days. You know, uh, the followers of uh, the followers of God weren't keeping any of the day. So I, don't, I can't understand how he came to that conclusion. But I know I had an incident with him when he came to Northampton Church. I was talking to him in the foyer, and I said, um, "Can you tell me about all the Jesuits that have?" Um, uh, uh, in our church and he screamed at me he said they would say that wouldn't they now I never said he was a Jesuit but something I hit a nerve somewhere and, and I was surprised that we've heard later you know later that was, he was teaching about you know uh, the mark of the beast he didn't, he didn't believe that it was um, no. you know the Rome it, it was um, something else and so you know you, you've got to you, know, you can't follow a man because they'll, they'll let you down but um, you know it's it's a I was absolutely shocked because he screamed at me. Everybody looked. And I thought, well, why is he talking to me like that? I was just asking, you know, can he tell us about him? Because what it, his sermon was on about, you know. And uh, and I was absolutely shocked. And I thought, something's not right here. So thank you for those thoughts. Okay, if there's no more thoughts, we'll be the next... Uh, two paragraphs. Would somebody like to read the next two paragraphs, please? To Charlie, can I say something? Oh, yes, quickly? yes, please, yes. Just quickly on what Sandy was saying about Professor Samuel Bakioki. He is 
uh, someone who brought some confusion in Adventism, um, especially the fact he actually wrote on, I think it was on Messenger. He destroyed our belief that the papacy is, is the beast of revelation. He destroyed that doctrine and many people went along with it. He, he is really, really, he was brutal to that. And I'm not surprised that he also was trying to uh, suggest that uh, the Lord's Day was not the Sabbath. So was this guy an Adventist who masqueraded to be a, a, a Catholic priest who masqueraded as an Adventist to destroy our faith and our fundamental beliefs? Who knows who he was? I do not know. The thing is that Many a times when somebody holds this title, professor, you know, we we give more, we tend, humanly speaking, we tend to give more respect and listening ear to someone just because he is a professor. No, we should uh, trust the words of Jesus and study the scriptures for ourselves because a professor can err. He is not infallible. So that is the thing that I see most of us in church, if we have a speaker, a theologian coming from the conference, we pay so much attention and believe everything that they say from the pulpit is right. But many a times they actually not. They are coming to convince us to believe something we shouldn't be believing. I have seen that happen in my previous church and I just, it's just good to be aware that although they are coming to bring messages to us, they may be mingled with error, and it's up to us to ask the Lord to help us to discern. Thank you. Uh, yes. So thank you for those thoughts. Yeah, um, there was uh, a student, and uh, she was late handing her assignment in, and so she decided to go round um, Bakayaki's house, and and she did. And the sun opened the door, and another there was a door to another room. And she could see a big picture of the Pope in that room, and all marble flooring. Yep. So we, you know, a friend to shout at me like he did. I, I was absolutely shocked. You know, I, I believe he was he was from the Catholic Church because somebody said that them uh, he was preaching, and somebody said, "Well, he's, he, he preaches in our church," and the person was a Catholic. I can't remember the, the whole story, but. I believe he was, he'd, he'd come to destroy the Double family. agent. Yeah, he was a double agent. Well, <laughs> I would say he was a double agent because he um, uh, he didn't he didn't try and change their minds, did he? No. He just no. came to change the, that, the Adventist churches and minds. There's a lot of things going, a lot of things that um, didn't add up. Yes, thank you for those thoughts. Well, well, we'll read a couple of paragraphs. Would somebody like to read the next two paragraphs, please? Yeah, I'll read. Thank you. Uh, Jesus pointed out the power of false teaching to destroy the appreciation and desire for truth. No man, he said, having drunk old wine straight away, desireth new. For he says, the old is better. All the truth that has been given to the world through patriarchs and prophets shone out in new beauty in the words of Christ. But the scribes and Pharisees had no desire for the precious new wine until emptied of the old traditions, customs, and practices. They had no place in mind or, or heart for the teachings of Christ. They clung to the dead forms and turned away from the living truth and the power of God. It was this that proved the ruin of the Jews, and it will prove the ruin of many souls in our own day. Thousands are making the same mistakes, the same mistake as did the Pharisees, whom Christ reproved at Matthew's feast. Rather than give up some cherished idea or discard some idol of opinion, uh, many refuse the truth which comes down from the Father of light. They trust in self and depend upon their own wisdom 
and do not realize their spiritual poverty. They insist on being saved in some way by which they may perform some important work. When they see that there is no way of, we of weaving self into the work, they reject the salvation provided. And starts for reading the two paragraphs. Mm, a lot there. You can't, you can't, you can't trust and in, in self and depend on your own wisdom. Because wisdom's of God. Man's wisdom is foolishness. Mm, man has itching ears. Mm, wants to explore other doctrines. And, uh, it's folly. Does anyone have any any thoughts on these two paragraphs? So Jesus pointed out the, the power of false teachings to destroy depreciation and desire for the truth. That's what we've been talking about. Mm. You know, a, a lot, lot of people follow these people. I and mean, when we had um, uh, Ford, look what happened there, and then uh, uh, others, you know, and, and it's, it's proved the ruin. Uh, Koresh, yeah. Well, all, all, most of it ended up dead. You know, there was, they must have been hypnotised by that man. He, he did sermons that lasted 12 hours. Now, you don't have a span of, of um, sitting to, to listen to a sermon for 12 hours, you've got to be in a hypnotic state. Because man's span, you know, of, of um, I can't think of the word now, but um, you can only take in so much at once. Mm. And they, they clung to the dead forms and turned away from living truths and the power of God. So sad. And it was proved the ruin of many Jews. There's a lot of confusion in the church because we went to a church Sabbath and it was showing a, I think I said this before, um, a Catholic video. The woman was crossing herself and there was singing. candles. Sing, she was singing, wasn't she? She was singing and crossing herself. And I said, you know, I said to them, this shouldn't be on, it's, it's abomination. Anyway, they took it off. But after the service, they put it back on. You know, what can you say? And it's going into people, you and know. And it's, it's like a community church, you know. You don't want to offend anybody. Well, if people are offended by the truth, you know. Um, well, what can you say? Um, can I just say quick yes. something quickly before you close this to the say so? Yes. Rather than giving up some cherished idea, um, well, she begins by saying thousands are making the same mistake as did the Pharisees whom Christ reproved at Matthew's feast. Rather than give up some cherished idea or discard some idol of opinion, many refuse the truth which come down, comes down from the Father of light. Um, they trust in self and depend upon their own wisdom and do not realize their spiritual poverty. Yeah, it, we, 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 we have, uh, definitely we need to pray that God may help us, that we will not make an idol um, of our ideas, uh, of our opinions. Um, you know, some, some, sometimes we might have some preconceived ideas which we can idolize that, um, you know, we, 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 we study the Bible uh, in that frame of mind. So when the Bible says something different or somebody presents the word and, and you know the truth has been presented, this, because you see, the truth has its tone. It's unique. And it hits, it cuts. But how many will say, well, I've been wrong. Um, uh, uh, and this is where self is, is put to test because self wants to cling on because he, the, the natural heart 
loves sin, loves to stay in that comfortable zone where it's not given much to think about. There's not much sacrifice. Receiving the truth takes sacrifice. And um, unless the Spirit of God con is working uh, naturally, the natural heart is, is arrogant, is prideful, and it's not easy. But we have to constantly, this is why we have to constantly, somewhere Sister Wife says, when we knock at the door of investigation, we need to have an open mind. Because if we think we know, then the Holy Spirit can teach us. And I think this is a situation that um, our Christ was facing when he, he was discussing with the Pharisees. May God help us. Amen. Thank you for those thoughts. It's true. Well, it's just about just gone half past now. So thank you, everyone, uh, for the contributions and the texts. Um, uh, Brother Desire, you happy to close in prayer for us, please? Let's pray. Loving Father, thank you so much for waking us this morning. Thank you for this opportunity to study your word. Please sanctify us through thy word. Your word is truth. We ask, Lord, that you may put in our hearts such zeal, such appreciation, such longing for your word. Hide your words in our hearts that we may not sin against. Help us to esteem your words above our favorite food, favorite meal. Help us, Lord, to value your words. Thank you for using our sisters as they were facilitating this reading and for everybody who was able to join this one. As we go about the day, may our actions, our thoughts, and our words be guided by your word. As the Lord said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from your mouth. Father, pray, I pray that you may help us. Help us again, that people may see when we go out there, that the word is our guide, is a lamp unto our feet, and a light unto our path. Thank you for your prayer this morning. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you for the prayer. Would you like to give the announcements, please? So uh, thank you, sisters, again for uh, taking the cover this morning and yesterday. May God bless your ministry. Uh, just a reminder that we are day, a day away from the yeah. retreat. If um, anyone is considering to come, please uh, do get in touch with Sister V, Brother JB, and uh, fill up the form. I know that some people might want to come on uh, on Sabbath as well. Um, I think we'll check with Sister V if there's information already on that. Usually, um, people would like to come on a Sabbath. Uh, there's a fee, um, uh, a day visit for day visitors. So um, uh, uh, I will check with Sister V if that information is already available. Uh, and um, yes, there's going to be a fee for that. But uh, you're always welcome if you're not able to come during the week and you think you can come on Sabbath, please do so. And we're still looking forward to um, continuing with Zoom. So um, the program, I think, has been shared on the main forum. If um, you're going to be on Zoom, uh, you might want to check the times for the programs. I think our prayers um, are on the program says 5 a.m. But if... Um, um, some uh, some some uh, some brethren want to start still early. That's still fine. Uh, but uh, we will do like um, programs together from five a.m. 
uh, the evening service again. Uh, everything else will try to to stick to our normal times. Um, evening service will be starting at seven and finishing at eight o'clock. Um, but if there's any more information that um, um, any that we think might be necessary to share, we'll always put information on the on the main forum if there's changes to the program. Uh, the last thing I wanted to say is, um, if anybody is is struggling, maybe there might be some people coming from different parts of the country. I think there was a message saying um, there's a sister who's coming from who was looking for transport from Scotland. Uh, there's um, somebody who was looking for transport from London. If you know any information of somebody who might be willing to help who is driving alone or has space, please just share on the group. So maybe you never know, maybe somebody might benefit from um, from from that transport. Um, there will be midday prayers, as always, from 12 to 1. And then in the evening, uh, Brother Takudzwa is doing um, uh, the last presentation this evening, this week. Uh, from 7 to 8. And then tomorrow evening, as you know, um, we're going to be uh, bro um, sharing from Kevin Lee. So uh, keep this meeting in prayer. And uh, we pray that uh, God uh, is going to bless all of us by this event. May God bless you, brethren. Have a wonderful day. Amen. Amen.